Welcome to Test Rack Podcast, where we unlock your power to innovate. Hi, my name is Matt, and I'm going to be your host today. Test Rack's mission is to empower airmen, connect them to resources, and accelerate change across the Air Force logistics enterprise. Specifically, our team works as an innovation accelerator assigned to the Air Staff Logistics Directorate, where we partner with airmen to operationalize the new sustainment strategy. Barry, thanks for joining us on the show today. Um, really important topic here as we head into um, this month with Ether Sprint, right? And uh, and and today I'd, I'd love to talk about what Ether Sprint is, talk about the past successes of Ether Sprint because there's a lot of goodness out there um, to be shared, and then also moving forward, what we are doing a little differently with Ether Sprint uh, compared to last year and how airmen can get involved. So excited to have you on the show to talk through all those things. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and where you came from. All right, thanks, Matt. Uh, I'm, I'm a 2S um, supply guy, uh, grew up abroad. I uh, PCS'd in from Eielson Air Force Base to Tesseract. So while I was there, I, I did a lot of work in the spark cell community uh with afworks and and pack f spark like heading up some of that pack f spark tank initiatives and what got me like in and in really involved in in the whole spark network and innovation ecosystem was agitare uh initially just did a couple of cohorts with them uh with their design 101 and then did some further in-depth things with think wrong and ensign and um the deaf community, and then kind of got ingrained in the sauce really where I, I really found an appreciation for looking at things a little differently, coming from like a traditional green belt, CPI, uh, black belt, lean six sigma. I was out, I was not very happy with sticking to one process to navigate a problem. I, I kind of like to look at things from different lights occasionally or from different perspectives. So I kind of think that Think of that as a superpower almost where uh, I'm resourceful, not smart. I just find the right resources and connect the dots where I can. And it's the it's the airmen that are smart people, which is the cool part, right? We get to work with every day. Hey, you're an airman too. All right. Yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so ergo, you're smart. Air- uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I, I think uh, you absolutely have incredible superpowers so don't don't ever sell yourself short um you know mo- looking at at ether sprint um there's so much potential um in the force right uh there's so much potential specifically across the logistics enterprise given that that's our that's our wheelhouse uh so so what is ether sprint and um yeah let's go cool. well Ether Sprint is a is designed to identify specific problems in the Air Force logistics community, um, really the A4 community, right? And it's driven to accelerate field-driven solutions um, in such a way that that is fast and in iterations, guided by coaches and mentors um, from from various capacities of the Air Force. One of the coolest parts um, about Ether Sprint is the problem statements are Air Force level problems, right? Whereas most airmen in the field are solving local problems, right? They're solving a squadron level or, or you know, sometimes wing level issues. You know, here we are asking airmen uh, to dive deep into problem statements that affect all 340,000 total force airmen across the A4 and then also, you know, you know the the rest of the Air Force as well, right? Because we have such an impact on on the rest of the operation. Um so we had A1Cs working on like software projects, right? We had um you know all sorts of airmen from different backgrounds, different ranks, what it didn't matter if they were an A1C a senior airman, a staff, tech, master, um, they're there getting after problems together, right? And seeing the power of airmen working together, building teams, thinking differently, um, and using these 
um, these elaborate skill sets that they don't necessarily capitalize on a on a daily basis, uh, I think is uh, um, is really really cool. Um, and and let's let's talk about that last year in in twenty twenty two and um, and and what's the success and and the progress that we've seen in those three different winners um, or finalists, I should say. So a really cool one. Um, two airmen out of uh, Hill Air Force Base. Uh, developed a new way to measure data and metrics for for bench stock, specifically for fifth generation aircraft. So currently the demand levels are kind of still on the legacy side and they identified a new way to approach it, right? Um, the airmen are incredibly smart. They used a data analytics software that they owned on their side, as well as some, some Power BI tools that are available on, on the Air Force uh, AFNET network. So what they found in in doing so was was they could generate better real time data for maintenance from a supply perspective on on demand for bench stock, um, and they pitched at Loa. They were one of the top three winners. Uh, along the way, there was a piece that was missing, right? And that's that was a small policy piece uh, that needed to needed to get changed changed. So we, we've taken the correct action in routing the correct paperwork, getting that policy changed. It's it's going through the right channels. But in the interim, how, how do we make this thing happen, right? How do we make make this come to fruition? And that's that's by implementing like an, MMO, an MFR for policy to send out to to the MAGCOM currently, right? To make it where where this airman can go and collect this data because traditionally it wasn't done. Hey, this isn't this isn't there's no guidance on how to do this. And, you know, we are part of the DOD. We love guidance. We love policy. So let's, let's write something, let's get something out there and done. And that's, that's the last piece that's, that's being finalized now. And then the airman will have access to blade where, where not just him, but there's various, various airmen at units will be able to generate this data real time so that they're not waiting on expendable parts that should be ready, readily available within a bench stock. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think it's incredible that those, those two airmen, A1Cs, right? Yep. John and, and James, uh, just out there crushing it, um, with, you know, it's solutions that didn't necessarily know existed, right? Uh, at first and now leveraging, you know, Tesseract at the air staff and, and where our, true value proposition is is our ability to to help influence policy right there are a lot of different things that we can do and we connect them into resources uh, to ultimately accelerate change but having that ear to policy is critical right uh, especially you know knowing that we have a bureaucracy to deal with uh, to your point right we like policies we like guidance we like afis we like ttps and those all have their their place, right? They all they, they all serve a purpose. It's like they're they're they are important. Uh, so why not learn to work with the system and make the system more more agile? And and I think uh, I think you and and the team that you're working with to to action Ether Sprint is doing a fantastic job of um, making this all you know actualize. Uh, any other successes that you want to highlight? Yeah, we um, there's a data repository as well. We the one of the other teams. Um, that I managed to be a part of, which was really cool seeing also airmen and a few NCOs work in building low code, no code solutions, um, using tools that are already are, are available. So they, there's no extra resourcing, but we identified a, a, a serious gap in, in these tools being available or known to everyone in, in the enterprise. So the goal was to build a repository so that if I wanted this widget to talk to this widget, and I don't know how to make it, but I'm an admin and I need, I need this thing to talk to this thing specifically on AFNET. Like if it's, if it's, I need my Excel to talk to my, my Microsoft Outlook, or I need, I need I, to plug in a name and then it automatically generate an email template, right? That would be cool and eliminate so many minutes of my day, equaling so many hours of my day. Um, so we, we've done, we've done that. We've built, um, 
a SharePoint repository currently that exists right now where you can go and pull something like a EFSS routing power app where you, you don't need to use a, a, a routing document. You can just plug and play and it's auto sends directly up the chain and it identifies where it's waiting. Super cool. Um, we've teamed with a few other uh, managed columns in building this out and it's, it's going to be scaled a little bit further. But it, the fact is it's available now, right? So you can go go to the Teams channel and check it out and submit a submit submit a solution if you like and or take one to use for yourself. So I think that's really cool. It's um the DAF 365 demo days is the name of the, the Teams page. So until it gets ex escalated out. Awesome. Good stuff, man. Uh, it's really great to hear. And looking at the last Ether Sprint and the way we formatted that, we had primarily uh, core team members uh, on Tesseract coaching the uh, coaching the Ether teams, right? And and this year, I think it's really cool that we're able to expand that, right? And now we're working with uh, Airmen in the LNO network to inject their ideas and their perspective uh, and their experience as coaches, which is really cool. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what the expectations are uh, for the uh, for the LNO coaches? And I'm not sure if you can hear my dog in the background. Can you hear that? Sorry, he's not feeling very well. Um, if we can talk about uh, if we can talk about the coaches and, and the expectations for airmen, if they are selected to, you know, to, to move forward and compete uh, in Ether Sprint. So emphasis again on ecosystem, right? Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for an ecosystem. And what's really cool is we're at Tesseract, we're really leveraging that ecosystem, especially with our LNOs. So our LNOs that are currently our, this year's coaches are also part of their spark cells in some capacity. So then now we have that overlap between Tesseract and AFWorks, right? Where, where they can reach out to larger innovation networks, or maybe they've already got some resources. And Aether Sprint is built to, to be a sprint, a very fast, like quick iterations. Let's, let's rescope, let's build, let's rescope, let's build. And to deploy a solution within a year, basically, right? Our minimal viable solution. And our, our, our coaches, I'm going to highlight each one of their names, uh, Chris Anderson, uh, Nick Cavanaugh, Kareem Samuel, Kevin Almedia, uh, Taylor Mogford, and jo Josh Nash, um, all of which are heavy hitters within the, the Spark Cell communities. And it, it's really cool to see them both, see them all very well engaged and eager to see these solutions come to the fore forefront. And it, it ties in the challenge statements as well. So we we solicited for challenge statements from, from the A4 community, right? From the directorates from that level. But we also took in some advice from, from the ground. So we, 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 upon talking to the coaches, we asked them, hey, what are some serious challenges that you guys are facing from the A4 community? And then what we did is we married those, those, those challenge statements together. And those are the challenge statements you see with an Aether Sprint. That way we, there's a gap, right? Like you have, you have senior leaders and then you have the airmen on the ground and somebody's going to tell you there's a gap somewhere, right? But we know that there's a problem. So let's, let's marry up and let's focus on a good challenge statement so that we can really drive home a good solution. Yeah. I mean, oh, sorry. Now the dogs are, came into my room to play. Um, guys, come on. Dad's trying to work. Um, <laughs> so looking at these um uh you know these coaches i think it's i think it's awesome love i love mog right uh, he's been a an lno for for quite a while now um and uh, i don't know nash personally but he likes and reposts all of our stuff on social media so um so i appreciate him <laughs> and uh i got to meet uh kareem uh he came to the office not too long ago. Uh, he, he's doing Sharkhead lasers, right? 
no, he was with the with the guy who was with Sharpen those guys. Movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's still yeah. an awesome project name. That's yeah. why I guess I remember it. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I'm sorry about my dog. He's banjo. The process is pretty well, you know, laid out right on on social media and on uh, uh and, and where else did we post it again? Um, it came out in my first message. Yep. So I'll, I'll let you uh, uh, take it from here. So how can okay. an airman get involved? So the there's a MyPers message that went out. It may have gone to your junk mail. It may have gone to your auto spam. Uh, take a look at it. There's a link in there that will guide you to a, a Microsoft uh, form, which is only available on on um, on Nipper. We we had to choose, right? And we chose what would be easier for everyone, especially if you're working in teams within a unit, right? Like. You you work with three airmen. You're at your desk. You're like, hey, this is a serious problem, and we think we have a solution. Like, go ahead and type in something. Right? We're gonna look at everything, whether it's a, a sentence or a paragraph or even a PowerPoint. Um, you can also check out our Facebook page and our LinkedIn. I think both of the links are there. But again, just send it over to Nipper somehow, and and you can you can get on it that way. Um, but if you if you have a question about EtherSprint at all, you can. Uh, email myself or Ali Praskatch. Um, our names are both in the MyPers message and the, the social media posts as well. So, And I would also um, direct towards the website as well, uh, yes. just so we can have, uh, j- just for our listeners out there, we we keep track of all of the incoming messages as a team through through there as well. Um, but does not hurt to to message um, uh, Barry or, or Ali. Um, just because they they do own the project, um, you know, for the team, um, and if we will get back to you, um, <laughs> we might be busy people, but we will get back to you. Uh, airmen are our number one priority, and uh, and making your ideas come to life is is our passion. So, um, really excited to work with you know with everybody. Um, I'd also like to direct people towards um, yeah, as our followers, if you're. If you're this far into the podcast, or if you are a subscriber, you probably do follow us on LinkedIn. That's where our biggest presence is. So uh, it's a good repository of information as well. And then also on Evolve, um, where there are, uh, might not be the easiest platform to navigate it right now, but um, uh, there's a lot of there are a lot of great resources there that we publish on our team, uh, CAC protected. Uh, so that's why we um, we have our information there and, and not on another. Um, on another source, uh, just to make sure that we are are limiting our uh, some of those public facing resources to uh, to uniform personnel or, or government personnel. Um, are there any other details that you want to go over with EtherSprint? Um, yeah, so we we've received a couple questions. One um, one is should I reply to all challenge questions or challenge statements? Uh, no, we we suggest you pick one. Pick one that really really hits home is is really a, a challenge or a problem for you or for your team. And then uh, and then that will help us best navigate the first round of eliminations. And then the another question I've seen pretty frequently is how how would I build a team? How would I find team members? And uh, uh, it's a little disheartening to hear that because I would hope that you would have, you know, wingmen that are in the same kind of situation you are, but maybe you don't, maybe you're uh, geographically separated. Um, in which case, I would I would recommend navigating to Vision. Um, you'll find that a lot of these challenge statements are already in Vision in some capacity where an airman came up with an idea, but ha- didn't have the resources or a team to navigate forward. So I think Vision would be a great place to find um, people to help. Amazing repository of ideas. Um, I think one of my favorite statistics for our team is we've been able to deconflict. I think it was like twelve um, duplicate efforts uh, just through that platform. Um, yeah, I, I, outstanding, uh, outstanding place for for Airmen to go and to um, and to just view other people's ideas and uh, and collaborate, right? Because that's the entire like that's the intent, right? You know, making sure that we are. Um, you know, crowdsourcing our, you know, not just funds, but, you know, knowledge, experience, expertise, and, and getting after solutions that, um, that help with aircraft readiness. Um, 
So I think that really that covers everything, right? You know, we we talked about the background of of Ether Sprint. You know what it is. Uh, we we talked about Ether Sprint twenty two, and and some of uh, some of those wins there and the progress, and and then moving forward, we talked about Ether twenty three, and um and and the coaches and and then uh, we talked about how to submit. So I'm not sure if we're missing anything. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think we're missing anything. Um, we'll we will be publishing or at least announcing frequently on the status of the projects, so that way people can kind of keep track with them, tr- keep track of them. And then the semifinalists will go into vision, and you'll see them there progress. That way, if they don't make it to as a winner, right? Like there's still some momentum, especially if there's other stakeholders out there that want to support that that initiative. Yeah, that's something else I'm glad you brought up and to foot stomp is while this is a competition, like we're, we do not necessarily believe that there is one winner, right? That's we're not here correct. to just we're not just here to announce like a like a like a first place winner and then everyone else is left hanging out to dry. Um uh, we're here to uh connect airmen to resources and and connect airmen to, you know, to like-minded airmen uh, to accelerate change, right? Because there are millions of ideas out there in the minds of airmen, and um, and we're trying to get after as many as our bandwidth allows, right? Um, and then tapping into the unlimited energy, the LNO network, um, the Spark network, and strategic partnerships. Uh, so thanks for bringing that up, Barry. Yeah. Uh, any last uh, any last words here before uh, before we call it? No, I think that's it. It's all good. Thanks, Matt. Hey, thanks, Barry. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you again for listening to Tesseract Podcast. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and connect with us on LinkedIn. Any references to trademarked, copyrighted, or protected products or services such as books, movies, or businesses are used here for the limited purpose of education and professional development of Air Force Airmen. If you have any questions, please contact us at www.tesseract.af.mil.